The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Welcome to a new edition of Kingdom Connection. We're so glad that you're here today. I'm joining you from the beautiful city of Jerusalem, and you can see behind me some of the most important real estate on planet Earth. So much of our Bible comes from this property right behind me that you can see so clearly to, to, from Calvary to the Temple Mound to all the Mount of Olives where Jesus is going to return someday according to the book of Zechariah. And I believe today's message is one that is vital that you need to hear. And I really want to encourage you to lean in. The Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 7 in verse 6 that you and I have a connection to the Jewish people and to the land of Israel that we need to be aware of. This is what he said to Moses. He said, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you, listen to these words, to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the people of the earth. And we know that that is natural Israel, but you and I through Jesus Christ have been engrafted in and we are spiritual Israel. So hear these words through that filter also. Then he goes on to say, a powerful, one of my favorite verses actually in Deuteronomy 7 and verse 7, he says, For the Lord did not set his love on you or choose you because you were more in number or you were the smartest or you were the strongest or you were the most talented. You know what he's saying? He said, but he chose you for you were the least of all the people. God doesn't love us because we're valuable. We're valuable because God loves us. And that's what he said to Israel. He said, you were the smallest, you were the least likely to succeed, but I set my love on you. I set my favor on you. I set my grace on you, and I have raised you. And I want to talk to you today because we need to understand the importance of our connection to the nation of Israel. I'm so concerned when I watch the news. It's like a whole generation in America particularly is being disconnected from their Jewish roots, disconnected from the fact that our Bible is a Jewish Bible, a book that came from this culture and this part of the world. Our Messiah is a Jewish Messiah. And I want to teach you some things today, and I pray that God will make this real, real simple teaching today. But listen, if you'll lean in and hear what I'm saying, there's a blessing connected to it concerning your life and your home. First of all, I want to say that Israel, meaning the people of Israel, not just the land of Israel, but the people of Israel are special people. It's not just merely the land of Israel, but the people of Israel that God says, I have chosen. God sovereignly chose Israel, and God so sovereignly chose the Jewish people. Israel is a nation that is God-created, God-decreed, God-loved, God-called, God-elected, and listen, it's God-protected. And when you understand that, and he said in Genesis 12 and verse 3, I will bless those that bless you, Israel. I will curse those that curse you, and all nations will be blessed by you. That's a powerful thing. Israel is a special people, and God has chosen this nation for his glory. And he said, I've chosen this nation and this people for my good, a special people, secondly, with a special purpose. God made one covenant with one man named Abraham. And then he said, I'm going to make a better covenant, a new covenant, but it will be connected to that old covenant, and it'll come through one man, Jesus Christ. And Israel is, is a special people. The Jewish people are special people with a special purpose. Thirdly, I want to say this, that Israel 
is under special protection according to the word of God. The Jehovah of the armies of heaven guards this chosen nation and these chosen people. Jeremiah 31 says this, that God says to destroy the Jews and the nation of Israel, you will have to destroy the power that regulates the sun, the moon, and the stars. You could no more destroy Israel than you could destroy the entire universe. This is a special people. It's a special place, and it has a special protection on it. Michael, the archangel, guards this nation. There's no real reason why they are existing except the hand of God has protected this nation in a mighty way. And why does that matter? Because the Lord spoke to me before I came on this trip here, and I wrote down what he said to me deep in my spirit. He said, when you bless what God has blessed, God is going to bless you. It's what he told me in my soul. I, because I, I said, Lord, I feel such a love for Israel, and I feel such a love for the Jewish people. And this really, I've always loved this. I've been coming for almost 30 years to Israel, and I've always loved the nation and loved the Holy Land and loved the Jewish people. But just in the last five years, something has shifted in my heart. Something has shifted into my spirit, and I couldn't, I tried to get my mind around it just coming over here on the airplane. Why do I, why do I feel such a connection for such a time as this? And that's when the Lord gave me that little, that little line. He said, listen, I want to say it again, and it's from Genesis 12 and verse 3. I'll bless those that bless you. And the Lord said, when you bless what God has blessed, God is going to bless you. When you favor what God favors, God is going to favor you. Don't ever forget that. It's one of the most important lessons. If you want God's blessing and favor on your life, bless what God has blessed and God will bless you. Favor what God has favored and God's favor will come on you. So Israel is a special people. It has a special purpose, is operating and existing under a special protection. So are you. You are special to God. He didn't choose you because you were great. He didn't choose you because he didn't have others more talented, more gifted, more qualified. He chose you because he set his love on you. Not only are you special to God, he loves you so much, you don't feel important. If I were to come and put this microphone in your face and say, do you really feel like you're important? Many of you would say, I don't feel very important at all. But God said, I didn't choose you because you were the best. I chose you because I love you. And you don't have to qualify. He qualifies you. You're valuable because he loves you. You're not valuable because of what you've done or what you achieve or what you have. You're valuable because he set his love on you. You have a special purpose, just like Israel. You have a special purpose God has his hand on your family. Your family's not like the other families in your neighborhood. You belong to God. That family belongs to God. That business that you own has a special purpose. That job that you work, that life that you have, it has purpose on it. God's going to be glorified in your life. God's going to be glorified in your family, in your children, in your business. The work of your hands are going to bring glory to Jesus Christ, just like this nation is bringing glory to Jesus Christ. And I want to just proclaim it in a new year that's coming and all that, may, uh, that you may face. I've got news for you. You're under a divine protection just like Israel. You have special protection. The Bible said in Isaiah that no weapon formed will prosper. And you know, that's almost one of those verses that we hear so much that it just goes in one ear and out the other. But he said, it will be formed, but I won't let it go but so far. I promise you today that we serve a God who knows how to protect his own. He can protect your reputation. He can protect you and hold things back. He can cause things that should happen to not happen because he's a God of protection. Angels are coming with help. Angels are protecting your babies, your family, your children, your marriage. Just believe it today because 
what God's doing for natural Israel, special people, special purpose, special protection, he's doing for you. Can I throw one more at you? This is a special place. I'm, I'm in Jerusalem, and I'm standing here, and every time I come, I think, well, you know, it, it won't have the magic, so to speak. It won't affect me like it always affects me. And every time I come to this place, especially, you know, when I, when I just turn my mind to Calvary and I remember what Jesus did, I say to myself, this really is, every time I set my eyes, and you know, it's one thing to see it through a TV screen, but when you come to the Holy Land, you will say these words, this is a special place. This is unlike, I've been all over the world. I have preached in Sydney, Australia, and Mexico, and South America, and Europe, and anywhere you can imagine, Africa, I've been all over the world. I can truly say there is no place like this place that affects me spiritually like Israel. It's a special place. Think about it. Why? Why do you say it's a special place, Pastor? God has put his people in a special place. God took the whole earth and he found one land out of all, one piece of real estate out of all the big old planet. He found one spot. And he said, I choose that land and I call that, listen, he uses these words, my holy land. And then he took one city out of that land and he said, I call that my holy city. I'm standing in it and it's overwhelming. Out of all the places, God said, I call that my holy land. That's my nation. I call that my holy city. And then God took one hill. You're looking at it. He said, I, I, I call that hill, and he uses these words scripturally, my holy hill. Praise God. My holy land, my holy city, my holy hill. And there on that holy hill, it's where Abraham offered Isaac, a beautiful picture of Calvary. The Bible said that the wood was laid on the son's back, Isaac, and Isaac carried the wood for the sacrifice up the mountain. The father knew for three days it took him to climb the mountain. And the Bible said the father in his mind knew for three days that his son, in his mind, he was as good as dead. What a picture of Jesus carrying the cross. What a picture of the father seeing his son in the grave dead for three days. The father then took that son and laid him on the altar. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you, me, who would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God. This is a special place. That's where it happened. The same hill that Abraham offered Isaac. And the Bible said when, Isaac, when Abraham raised the knife, that an angel came and stopped him. But our heavenly father, he didn't stay the hand. He watched his son bleed and die on that cross for my sins and your sins. That hill is where the temple was built. That hill is where Jesus was crucified. And God said, that is my holy hill. That's the most important spot on planet earth, the temple mound behind me. Now I want to say three things about this holy land, this holy place. Number one, Israel will never give up Jerusalem. There are special people with a special purpose. They have special protection, and this is a special land. And Israel, according to the Bible, will never give up the city of Jerusalem. Secondly, Israel will be invaded by their enemies from the north, according to Ezekiel 38. And there is coming a world leader who will negotiate a deceitful peace treaty with Israel, according to Daniel 8 and Daniel 9. But ultimately, 
Jesus Christ will bring victory. He will bring revival to this nation unlike anything they have ever seen before. There's coming a revival to this nation and to the nations of the world. And I believe that we're living in one of the most incredible times in human history. And just when it looks like this nation will be overran by its enemies, there will come the vindication of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the Antichrist, upon the powers of darkness, the nations that turn their back against God. We must stand with Israel because God will bless those who bless what he blesses. God will favor those who favor what he favors. And America must favor and bless Israel. We must have our people understand that in the body of Christ. So today I want to encourage you that the Bible teaches that it's all going to come down to, to the fact that God has a plan for Jerusalem and for the nation of Israel. And that plan is centered around God's plan is centered around Jerusalem and is centered around Jesus Christ being king over all the earth and ruling and reigning from this spot called Jerusalem. What an amazing place. What an amazing day. And listen, you're either going to follow the lamb, which is Jesus Christ that takes away our sins, or you're going to end up, according to Revelation 12, following the beast. Which one are you going to follow? The beast, the antichrist? All you've got to do is look around and see Jesus is coming again. And I still believe it. I still believe the trumpet is going to sound. I still believe that God has a plan and it's centered around Jerusalem and it's centered around Jesus. And he's coming back for his people. Are you ready? If you're not, then pray this prayer with me today in closing. Right where you're sitting, right where you're watching this program, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me and cleanse me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. In Jesus' mighty name. You know, I hear these prayer towers going off, but I want to proclaim right in the middle of it. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And he's the Lamb of God that takes away your sins. You're a special person to God. You have a special purpose. You have special protection. And one day, he's going to take you to a special place called New Jerusalem. And you're going to spend eternity with him. If you don't know him as your Savior and you prayed that prayer with me, just say, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Pick up the phone, dial the number on the screen. We want to hear from you. Thank you. My announcer is going to tell you more. Each year, thousands of rockets are fired into cities, neighborhoods, and schools across Israel. In Eshkol, an area immediately next to the Gaza Strip, when the sirens sound, families, children, and elderly alike have just 15 seconds to take cover in bomb shelters. The trauma of terror ripples through all generations, from Holocaust survivors to the very youngest of children. But it's because of your generosity that we have been able to break ground on the brand new Eshkol Region Trauma Center. Here, children and Holocaust survivors alike will have a safe place to build community, strength and resiliency, and receive the counseling services they so desperately need. As a thank you for your gift to this critical project, we want to equip you for your fasting journey in 2020, beginning January 5th. With your generous gift of $1,000 or more, you may request the Open My Eyes collection, as well as a tree of victory planted in your honor in the community of Eshko. For your gift of $325 or more, you will receive the Open My Eyes gift set. Or for your gift of $50 or more, we will send you the Fasting 2020 kit. For your gift of any amount, we want to thank you by sending you Jensen Franklin's book, Fasting, 101 Most Asked Questions. Join us as together we fulfill biblical prophecy by bringing comfort to the nation of Israel with the Eshkol Trauma Center. Visit us online today. You know, when God spoke to my heart to begin to bless Israel, to begin to favor Israel, he said, you know, that if you will bless what God blesses, then he'll bless you and your family and your ministry and people's lives. If you'll give them a chance to bless Israel, I'll bless them. 
I'll favor them. And I begin to pray and say, God, I'm, I'm open. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And I'm more excited about what we're doing right now than ever before. We're building a trauma center right there in Gaza, a bomb shelter. It's almost, I think it's 16,000 square feet. And inside is a feeding center. Inside is an indoor playground. And, you know, most people have a four foot by four foot bomb shelter in their homes in this area. But can you imagine when it goes on for days staying in that four by four area with your family they can all run to this area it's fortified it's safe and i believe that this is one of those projects that god is honoring and i want to thank all of you who are helping us with it why don't you pray about what you can do if you will bless what god has blessed and he's blessed israel god will bless you if you will favor what god has favored he will favor you genesis 12 and 3 I will bless those that bless you, Israel. I'm one of those blessers, and you are. And I want you to do your very best. We're believing God for $1 million to come in on this project so that we can get it done and completely. It's already under construction. It has begun thanks to your faithfulness. We do two things with our resources. We buy airtime all over the world. And then we take anything we have left over and we pour it into projects just like this. And boy, I believe God's going to bless this project and any family that gets involved. We would love to tell you more. My announcer is going to tell you what you can do to be a part of the miracle that is taking place on the border for these amazing families, brave families that live in combat zones. Thank you for watching this program. Let God speak to your heart. Do your very best. I'm believing today there's a hundred people that can do exceedingly abundantly above everything you've ever done before and help us with this project. God will bless you. You ask God what he wants you to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You ask God what to do, and I believe he'll tell you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Well, we're here in Eshkol, the region of Eshkol, and it is a place that a lot of activity happens here, a lot of intense rocket fire. Give us your name, please. My name is Michal Uziao, and I'm a proud mother uh, that lives here in our communities on the border with Gaza. How many children do you raise here in a war zone, basically? My own children are three, but we have thousands of children here. We have uh, over uh, 3,500 children uh, that are raised uh, under the age of 18 in our communities. And I'm proud to say that we continue to grow and bring more children and new families that are joining us. Why would you want to raise your children in an area like this that, that we in America, we see on the news constantly? At times, there are hundreds of rockets that are shot at the very cities in this region where you live, where you raise your children. Why, why do you feel such a deep conviction that it's important that you live in this region? So first I will say um, that I'm proud and I feel privileged yeah. Despite all the challenges uh, that you described, and I can share with you many uh, tough moments that we had with the children with rockets and, uh, and with the fires and, uh, and the terror tunnels that we need to face, but I feel fortunate to live in Israel today and not 80 years ago in Europe. I feel fortunate that I live in a country that is a democratic country. Yes. I can hug my children at night. I know that I have a, a country that uh, is taking care of us, yes. and I'm fortunate. Behind me is a bomb shelter yes. that if the sirens go off or the signals go off, you would run for that, your family. You would yes. take your children yes. into that. We have 15 seconds where we live. 15 seconds means that whenever someone shoots a rocket, we have 15 seconds to run for our life. And it's the same 15 seconds it's, if it's a, a Holocaust survivor that is 90 years old, it's 15 seconds when it's a baby and, it, and if I'm taking a shower and I need to run and grab my children and, and run into the shelter, it's always these 15 seconds. Uh, but step by step, we learned how to do the best in this crazy reality to be grateful for what we have yeah. and, and to continue to invest in life, in education, in loving our children, not to hate the other side, but still oh. to be strong 
and uh, and to be proud that we are fortunate to live here. So we're, we're talking about a trauma center that's needed in this region and you know about it. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how important that would be as a mother for your children, for other hundreds and hundreds of families that are around here. And then I love the aspect of in this trauma center, you would bring in their hundreds of Holocaust survivors that live in this region. Mm -hmm but they would come together, the young and the old, and the young children that have been traumatized by the constant barrage of missile fire and explosions and death, and yet they could sit and talk to Holocaust survivors and hear their stories and realize the same God that got them through the darkest hours that they faced is with you now. So over 90% of the children in this area, because of the bombs that have hit, they've heard them, they've seen them, they've seen the effect. The post-dramatic stress that they suffer from is very real. Mm -hmm. And there's help and there's things that we can do in this shel shelter or center mm -hmm. that can make a real difference in children's lives and in families. Absolutely. We call it, uh, we don't say post-traumatic because it's not post, it's something that we live every day. Wow. We call it ongoing uh, trauma. Um, and we try not to focus in the trauma. We, we try to focus on resiliency, how it's like a muscle. If you want to be fitted, you need to work in the gym and work on your muscles. If we want to go through uh, emergency, you have to... Um, to train your muscles of, uh, of resiliency, how ca you can uh, become stronger and stronger. And we're strong and we are proud and we're here to stay. And you're not alone because you do have friends and we're excited about the, the trauma center and being a part of what God is doing. And that is comforting God's people, building a trauma center with bomb shelters that is, will be a safe haven, as she just described, for people to run to. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And a thousand may fall at my right side, 10,000 at my left, Psalms 91. And He'll give His angels charge over us to keep us. But we've got to do what we can do to build this center, this amazing ministry, that will take place to precious families right here in the nation of Israel. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you for thank you. sharing your story today. It's truly remarkable. God bless you. Thank you. Sharice and I want to invite you to join us on our Holy Land tour. It's an amazing trip, unlike anything you've ever experienced. And we'll be on the trip. We get on the buses. Our family will be on there. And I promise you, it will change your life. 2020 is the year to go. You've been thinking about it. You've been praying about it. This is the year to go, 2020. God's going to open your eyes to things you've never seen and experienced before in the Holy Land. Get signed up today.